Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here live via Skype with James Jacob Prash. Jacob, this is glad you asked. Question number two uh, from a Joseph Martin. Uh, he asked, Jacob, I am not a pre-tribber. If we are truly indwelled, though, by the Holy Spirit, how can that same Holy Spirit be taken away from us in the end times? And would we lose our ability to understand Scripture once the Spirit was removed from us? Not at all, but thank you for your question, first of all. Let's understand something fundamental. When Jesus rose from the dead, in John chapter 20, he breathed on his apostles and told them, receive the Holy Spirit. At that time, they became regenerate, born again in the New Testament sense. They accepted the Lord Jesus and the gospel, and he breathed on them. When somebody is born again, Jesus breathes on them. In a spiritual sense, the word pneuma in Greek is, is the same as the word uh, for spirit in Greek. The whole pneuma, like pneumonia or pneumatic drill, breath, you know, it's the same term. He breathes on somebody. If somebody gets saved, Jesus personally breathes on them. Now, this goes back to the creation in Genesis, where God breathed into Adam, and Adam became a living soul. That's when somebody, man, was created. But in being newly created, it's the same thing. God breathes. So the Holy Spirit indwells the believer from the time of regeneration, of second birth. That's one thing. But then Jesus tells the apostles in the Synoptic Gospels, go to Jerusalem and wait. Wait for the Holy Spirit. Wait for what they just received? No, no. The Holy Spirit outpoured that unites and empowers the church and convicts the world. As Jesus said in John's Gospel concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. A distinction must be made between the spirit indwelled and the spirit outpoured. God's spirit will never be taken from the hearts of his people. Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Don't even give it a consideration. He will not leave his people. He will continue to dwell in them. That's for believers. For the unsaved and for the world, it's different. The Holy Spirit, we are told, will not always strive with man. There is a shift in God's dealing with man at the end of the age. When we read the book of Revelation, God goes back to dealing with the world and with fallen man and with Israel the way he did in the Old Testament. His folk, once the church is raptured and removed, his focus essentially turns back to Israel. Not only that, but he becomes the God of wrath and judgment again. Same God as the New Testament, but he behaves in an Old Testament motif. Grace is over. God is angry in the book of Revelation with the seven seals and the seven trumpets and the seven vials and so forth. So, right now, the Holy Spirit, having been outpoured on the day of Pentecost, is convicting the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment, and empowering the church to communicate the gospel. That is what ends. God's Spirit will not, not forever strive with man. Now, it does not say in 2 Thessalonians that the restrainer will be taken away. It only says he will stop restraining. He will step aside. And the Antichrist, of course, will appear, take his place in the temple and so forth. He will no longer be restrained by the Holy Spirit. But that will not affect the Holy Spirit indwelling believers. It will only affect the world. It'll affect the unsaved. It'll affect the power and unity of the church to, to propagate the gospel, to disseminate the message of salvation. It becomes a very different game.
once that happens. Once the rapture happens, following that, not at the same time, but following that, the rapture being between the sixth and seventh seals, then the, the playing field has been leveled. It's an entirely different game. God is dealing the way he did in the Old Testament. Is he doing things, the 144,000, the, the, the two witnesses and things? Yes, but not the way he operates now, the way he operated in the Old Covenant. That's the difference. Don't worry, my brother. The Lord's Spirit will never be taken from you. He will never leave you. Don't you leave him, and the same applies to me. We don't leave him. He's not going to leave us. I'll never leave you or forsake you. That's for believers. But for the world and for the unsaved, it's something completely different. But even then, when the restrainer no longer restrains, it doesn't say he's left or gone. It just says he has stopped restraining. Even John MacArthur has admitted that. And I'm no fan of Mr. MacArthur, but he has that right. Well, thank you so much for your question. Be blessed and get back to us sometime. Your question was a good one. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, Jacob, one phrase that you said, you said back the way it was in the Old Covenant. That should have been New Covenant, right? No, back the way it was in the Old Covenant. Okay, 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 okay. All right, we got one more.